as we saw our, our procedure volumes decline because of some of the restrictions that occurred with the non-essential surgeries, that really put us into a whole different uh, ball game in terms of trying to manage labor and, and try to keep our staff you know, somewhat employed, even though we lost upwards of 80% of our patient volumes during that time. So it was a bitter pill, uh, a necessary pill, but I think that uh, our team really pulled together and uh, we came together as uh, a management team and we tried to address the things that, um, that were handed down to us and things that we saw going on in the community. And um, I think it's been a challenge. I think we're gonna be better for it uh, as a hospital, quite honestly. And I think as a community, we're gonna be better for it. So the first step, and I guess in our response was trying to discern, you know, what are those cases that met those four criteria? It was kind of like, you know, you're doing that, you know, surgery to save a life or to improve, you know, the progression of cancer or to, um, you know, try to spare a limb or something else, some body system that was not going to do well if it was not treated. And, uh, you know, we really went through, did that evaluation. And then our team, everybody from our schedulers to our managers working with the physician offices, uh, we really spent a lot of time trying to optimize our schedule. You know, we, you know, here at the hospital, we would do 130, 100, you know, 35 procedures per day on average. And during the uh, initial uh, non-essential order that went into effect, I think around the middle of uh, March, I think it was March 17th or March 18th, uh, we lost, uh, like I said, uh, almost 80% of our volume. So we were down, you know, in the neighborhood of, um, you know, 35, you know, cases on all of our, you know, that would include, you know, surgeries, endoscopies, and things like that. I think that, you know, we've seen last week was probably 75%. I think this week was, you know, 85, you know, or 80 or 85% back to normal in terms of our volume. So we'll see our business office come back. So I think that in terms of our normal staffing, we should really be back uh, to our normal staffing levels, we hope, uh, by the beginning of next week. Uh, the reason I think we're going to be better for it is that we've really had a sense of collaboration with um, a lot of different providers in Northeast Ohio. We see that um, we've you know, had a lot of dialogue with uh, Mercy and other providers just to make sure that we're looking at this holistically, that how can Southwood help Youngstown? How can Southwood help Mercy, for example, try to cope with the, the surge? But thankfully, you know, that was not required. So I think that's a, a testament. And uh, I think a lot of thanks goes out you know, to our community for trying to hunker down and, and weather you know, the initial part of the storm. For over a century, Farmers National Bank has stood strong. Through booms and busts, peaks and valleys, we've learned to know the seasons and how to grow in each of them. During challenging times, everyone is reminded of the value of solid relationships in both life and business. Farmers, stand strong.